Today's video is going to be about become one with the gearbox. It's my statement, my saying, and I'm going to explain what I mean by that. Uh, become one with the gearbox I use on Airsoft Society. Um, I use it on my titles for YouTube and so forth. And what is it? It means become just like the gearbox. And this video is talking about Jake's gearbox. Question is, have I become one with the gearbox? To work like this, you have to become everything that goes into the gearbox. You have to think about what goes in here, how it works, is it doing what it's supposed to. These are the things you have to consider. On the gearbox here, we know that when I was testing there was no O-ring in the air nozzle. I was talking about switching out the micro switch. I've made my own here, glued it in there. Now we're going to recently talk about the new things that I have discovered in the last few days. Um, I haven't posted up any videos in two days, even though I have figured this thing out. Um, I do know it inside and out, and I'm just about done with it. I'm just waiting for the uh, cutoff lever, which has JB Weld on it. And you can see that it's just not thick enough yet. So I need to let's put some more on there and cure it some more and then shape it down to fit for this gearbox so you get semi-automatic. Okay? So we can see the trigger pull is really short. It's right on that button on the inside for the uh, micro switch, different type. Um, it's from one of the MRFs. And I'm going to talk about what issues I have discovered through this because there are plenty of things I have done to this and I spent a lot of time. You can see here, radius gearbox shell in the front. Not very big, just took a file, did both sides at a time, put them down in the trash can like this and just go through one side, one side, turn it over. So you get it evenly done. And then what did I discover? Um, putting this thing back together, I noticed that this back screw right here is missing, missing a washer. So it's also very easy to over tighten because there's just a brass piece that uh, goes in between here. And that is easy to over tighten. Now, when I was working on this with my DSG, I noticed that this could be over tightened here. This could be an issue with pre engagement, holding the piston. So this is something becoming one with the gearbox, knowing what it means. Also, the spring guide is way too loose. Spring guide issues. Let's talk about spring guide. If the spring guide moves, which it can, up and down a little bit, and the reason for that is because the back of this hole here, the screw does not uh, hold the spring guide very well. And this could have been an issue with um, putting it in and not noticing and then trying to cycle your gearbox. Um, what that's going to do if your spring guide is not straight is mess with your spring. Also, the piston not being able to come back properly may hit into the spring guide, could have catastrophic damage. This is a possibility. Now, when I got this gearbox, there had been things put in and out and some things that were already there, used. Um, the wiring, for one, from what Jake told me, was he didn't do anything to. Okay, so um, what I have done is fix that just to have it ready to go. You want to put this in a DSG. There you go. But you got to become one with the gearbox when you think about this. This gearbox. What particular issues could happen doing this with the DSG? There are certain things that I said you'd have to consider, but I didn't say in the other video. I got uh, a little bit too excited getting out of this thing. And those things are screws. <laughs> there are a lot of screws on this thing. You have got to make sure that you uh, lock tight these screws. There's also a screw right here that's hex and that holds the uh, button here that would go in here for the antiversal latch. You'd hit a button for this and uh, right here in this area and it would hit the antiversal latch on this side. Now the issue with this is you don't ever want to use the antiversal latch uh, with a dual sector gear gun or anything with a high power spring. Um, the reason is because with a bigger spring, there's more tension, and you release the end first latch, you have a possibility of breaking something. Everyone always says, oh, you can reverse, you can pull the end latch. 
This is not true anymore because of the power of the spring. And if it's compressed, you can break something. It just depends how you do it. Pull it slightly, you let go. The gears don't rotate all the way. They stop in mid-rotation because of that antifrost latch, you let go of it, you lose some teeth. This is a great example. Um, it can come backwards, forcefully hit your piston in the back. Lose your tap-up plate. It was some of those videos that I had talking about how to preserve your tap-up plate, how to preserve your bevel gear and your pinion gear. These things become one with the gearbox. You gotta think, how does this gearbox rotate? It all goes together. Now, I wanna thank Jake for letting me work on this because I really like to do these things. Um, I like little mysteries and little puzzles and this was not uh, something that I could completely figure out because I don't have all the conditions. I don't have his gears. I don't have what he put in here for everything. You know, the things that are broken. I can't look at that and I can't go back to the same thing that happened because it could have been something like the spring guide as an example. Maybe the screw is too tight. However, what I have done, again, going back to becoming one like the gearbox, I made sure I checklist my own things so that this can cycle for long periods of time without any issues. And you can see up there, not the greatest sounding gearbox, but by God, you're going for reliability. If I was ever to go just for pure sound, I'd have to take out gears on this. I'm, the gear on this one, the sector gear, has too much movement. Um, it does not actually, the bushing does not actually hold the gear completely well. So uh, another thing we have mesh between the Aries uh, pinion and this uh, bevel gear. Uh, height adjustment is kind of awkward because of the mesh. I've had to change the bevel, I've had to change the spur, I've had to change the sector. <clears throat> when we talk about these things, maybe we're just saying, well, that's why you got it to work. You know, you just switched out a whole bunch of parts. That's not what it's about. You go in and out of this thing, you've got to know what you are doing. How would this got done in two days? How would it? I'm going to work, coming home, look at it. I'm not looking at it 24-7. I just inspect everything. That's what you're supposed to do. I am a gearbox. I want a spring. Hand me that spring. How does it work? Can it move properly? Can the spring guide hold it properly? That's how I found these issues. I was thinking, I am the gearbox. Treat me well, right? I want to see my parts. I want to know if they're working properly. So I have become one with the gearbox on this one and I have numerous times. Now what's the slowdown process on this? Why didn't I make this video days ago? I was talking about it was just doing other things. But Jake wants to see proof of this, right? He wants to see his gearbox working. He wants to see that I have done all this work. You hear that? There's no ring in the air nozzle. You can see the micro switch. You can see JB Weld on the bushings. So this is just about 100% finished, almost in a perfect way, almost in a perfect way. So the saying, become one with, become one with the gearbox means to be like the gearbox. If you want to be good at what you do, you got to think like it. You got to be like it. And that's how I get things solved. That's what makes me different than some other techs is that I look at everything I can figure out and become one like one. I do use other advanced tools, other advanced methods, but the main thing, if you cannot figure out your own issues and you're going somewhere else to ask and no one can give you help, you have to be able to solve them yourself. Become one like the gearbox. That's that statement. Here's some video footage going through the issues of this gearbox. If you guys like this video, Please give it a thumbs up and enjoy the rest of this. I mean, it's only bad if I go as fast as I can. And the reason for this is, is because the gears, the axles don't sit in here uh, well enough. You can kind of see that. Um, 
So as the gear spins without grease, it loses its center of balance and kind of makes this awkward sound. <laughs> 